Uh, I am a former professional athlete. I played for the Cleveland Browns, and I was born and raised in the city of Cleveland. And um, currently, I am an author and a professional uh, life coach and uh, public speaker. In 2011, I retired from the Cleveland Browns, uh, well, from the NFL, I should say. Um, and I uh, have made a decision uh, to just, you know, kind of pursue the, the rest of my life and the next 10 years and what I would want to do. And that kind of just opened up a lot of doors, of course, with my background and influence. It was uh, some great opportunities presented themselves. Uh, well, by 2013, I was kind of contemplating on going back to the NFL. Uh, just, you know, you know, kind of that, that hesitation. Did I make a bad decision? And uh, around that time, my brother told me that he was um, in need of a kidney transplant. And he had been on dialysis for a few months at that point in time. Um, and if you know my brother, is my big brother who put the football in my hand, 12 years older than me and taught me everything I know about the game. So he kind of put me in a, a, a position where I had to make a decision, you know. Um, he asked me if I would go and see if I was a match for him. He told me and explained me the details of how it goes. And I just told him, absolutely, I'll do it. So uh, he set me up an appointment with the clinic. I went through my process and it took about... I want to say about a couple months for me to actually get inside and to get um, my days just because of my schedule and the clinic schedule. So once I actually went through my two days of outpatient therapy, uh, things went well. I got my test results back. Um, they told me that you know everything checked out. My my health was it was great. You know I work out um, you know four to five days a week, and they told me that there was one issue that they just wanted to check again. So they made me wear the 24-hour blood pressure monitor and they had me wear that um, for the second time. Um, if any, and if anybody's had to wear that thing, uh, I'm in church with a blood pressure monitor going off, and it, you know, so kind of irritating, but I did it, and uh, they wanted to make sure that my blood pressure was okay because I did have elevated levels. Well, there's a history in my family of high blood pressure. So um, my mother is a diabetic, my uncle is a diabetic, my brother is a diabetic, and um, my sister is probably a diabetic but hasn't been diagnosed. Uh, so obviously there's a family history there. So uh, not to be long-winded, but um, I was diagnosed with uh, prehypertension and ruled out as a candidate based upon my age, uh, ethnicity, and the fact that it's, it's in my family, it runs in my family. So I was, the, I guess the decision was taken from me to be able to even give my kidney to my brother, which I was a match for blood type, and I was a candidate based upon my health, but ruled out because of the family history and the, the prehypertension. Uh, so with that, he's still going through dialysis. Uh, he still does not have a, a match at this point in time, um, which, you know, of course, it's my brother. So of course, in, in a way I am advocating for there to, you know, someone to step up to the plate um, to, to be a match for him specifically for him um, because we all know that you know when it hits family it hits home you know you wanna you wanna help you wanna help family I think uh, you need to become a, a registered donor today you know just just being straightforward and honest I think that more people need to step up to the plate and to be able to be registered because that's where we're gonna see the biggest the biggest health the biggest transition across the board and, and helping those that are in need there's uh, you know more organs needed than there's available at this point in time. So I think that we need people to step up to the plate and to you know just help across the board. And that's what that's what we should be doing right now. So become a registered organ owner today.